Looking at World War II from the distance of almost eight decades, one of the impressions given is that the Waffen-SS was superbly well equipped in comparison with the German army. This was certainly true in the later stages of World War II, when, through Heinrich Himmler's championing of his army and political intriguing, not to mention Hitler's growing distrust of the regular army, the SS did receive a lot of the best equipment, most importantly tanks and other armoured fighting vehicles. But this was not always the case. By war's end, Himmler's private army had grown to some 900,000 personnel in dozens of divisions. But at the start of the war, it was an extremely small organisation, and it wasn't called the Waffen-SS. In simple terms, the SS as an organisation was divided into three distinct groups. The Waffen-SS, known in the beginning as the SSVT, or ss Verfügungstruppe, the military branch. The Allgemeine SS, which administered the SS state within a state, and also the foreign volunteer contingents and the SS Totenkopfverbande, the units that ran the concentration camp system. The SS Verfügungstruppe, or SSVT, forerunner of the Waffen-SS, had been founded in 1934. Himmler was determined to build an army of political soldiers that would serve alongside the regular army in battle. The SSVT faced two challenges in the 1930s and the early part of World War II. They were manpower and weapons. The army was not happy with the entire SSVT concept, which it saw rightly as a threat to its own preeminent position, and it did all it could to make life difficult for the SS. Various small SSVT regiments had been formed across Germany, officered at the higher levels by experienced World War I veterans like Zepp Dietrich and Felix Steiner. The SSVT were expected to be fitter, better motivated and capable of more endurance than the average German soldier. The leaders also realised the value of plenty of automatic weapons to increase firepower, a lesson learnt, of course, in the latter stages of World War I with the famous stormtroops. However, the army, nonetheless, was able to ban any expansion of the SSVT until 1938. The removal of the anti-Nazi commander-in-chief of the army, General von Fritsch, along with the Minister of War, Field Marshal Werner von Blomberg, Himmler undoubtedly having a hand in each of the sex scandals that brought these men down, cleared the way for SSVT expansion. Himmler even persuaded Hitler to sign a decree that gave the SSVT recognition as a permanent military force in peace and war. However, the army still had control over recruitment, that is the allocation of recruits to the SS, most of them going to the army. By the time war broke out in September 1939, the SSVT was still very small, consisting of some three divisions. Additionally, there was a motorized regiment formed from the LSSAH, the Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, the Führer's elite household troops. These forces saw heavy combat in 1940 during the invasion of the Netherlands, and particularly in France and Belgium, famously against British forces, the SS committing several heinous massacres of British prisoners of war during the course of the fighting in France and Belgium, most notably at Le Paradis, behaviour at the time not condoned by the regular German army. Also in 1940, the name SSVT was changed to Waffen, or Armed SS. Due to limitations placed upon it by the army, the SSVT also had to be creative in the acquisition of weapons. Although deploying the standard Mauser 98K rifle, the decision to field more automatic weapons than the regular army caused it to adopt all sorts of machine guns and other types. For example, in lieu of sufficient machine pistols like the MP38, the SSVT utilised the earlier Bergmann MP35. Some 40,000 of these blowback-operated selective fire submachine guns were manufactured, and almost all of them went to the SS and police units. It fired the 9x19mm Luger round and used a 24 or 32-round detachable box magazine. Another weapon almost unique to the SSVT was the Knorr Bremser M35 light machine gun. An upgraded version, the MG36, was less successful unreliable, unsafe, and with a buttstock that had a disconcerting habit of falling off. Most of the latter were used for training or for SS police units behind the lines. 
The German takeover of Czechoslovakia in 1938 to 39 had allowed the SS access to a wide variety of well-made Czech firearms and also to some factories which became part of the wider SS empire, manufacturing weapons specifically for the Waffen SS. Many Czech weapons were eagerly adopted by the SSVT and the early Waffen SS. The SSVT was deliberately starved of German machine guns, and to fill gaps in the numbers of MG 34s that it actually possessed, it adopted several Czech machine guns. An excellent light machine gun adopted by the SSVT was the Czech ZB VZ 26, a type of weapon that later influenced the iconic British Bren light machine gun. Using the 7.92 by 57mm Mauser cartridge, it was fed from a top-mounted 20 or 30 round detachable box magazine. Regarding heavy machine guns, the SSVT adopted large numbers of Czech ZB-37s, a belt-fed, air-cooled, gas-operated weapon firing the standard Mauser round. It had a rate of fire of 500 to 800 rounds per minute. The SSVT was also the only German force to use the PZB MSS-41, a Czech-designed anti-tank rifle, these weapons also being manufactured for the SS after the takeover of Czechoslovakia. It was the first bullpup weapon deployed in combat in history, the magazine being located behind the trigger and grip, and with a magazine capacity of 5 or 10 7.92mm armour-piercing rounds, it saw action by SSVT troops against British and French armoured vehicles in 1940. One final and often overlooked weapon used by the SSVT and the early Waffen-SS was the famous World War I pistol, the Mauser C-96, known as the broom handle due to its distinctive grip. Its wooden holster doubled as a buttstock, turning the weapon into a carbine. Used extensively in the interwar period by the Chinese army in the 1930s and 40s, the SS adopted the fully automatic version, the Mauser M712 or Schnellfeuer, standing for Rapid Fire, that entered production in 1932. Closely resembling the standard World War I C96 semi-automatic pistol, the M712 used a 10 or 20 round detachable box magazine, and had a cyclic rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute, making it uncontrollable except when the butt was attached. These interesting weapons were gradually phased out as the SS gained more access to MP38 and 40 machine pistols. This is just a small selection of the hodgepodge of weapons used by the SSVT and early Waffen SS. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.